facing our future. We are glad to have you with us today as we kick off another great school year. Before we get started, two quick notes. Please turn off your cell phone or other noisemakers that could disrupt today's event. And we want to provide a heads up now so you're aware when it happens, towards the end of today's event, you will notice a drone flying overhead to take an overhead group photo. And now, enjoy a performance by our drumline as we begin today's program. we ask that you stand for the national anthem performed by a talented sleuth of our very own White Bear Lake Area High School Bears. Welcome students. Thank you. 
Thank you for sharing your talents with us this morning, students. It's always a great way to begin a new school year. Now, we welcome to the podium the White Bear Lake Area Educators 2024 Teacher of the Year, Michelle Norcross. Michelle is a language arts teacher at the White Bear Lake Area Learning Center. Let's hear it from Michelle. Good morning. As White Bear Lake embarks on a new educational journey this year, we are focused on guiding our students toward their futures. But let's face it. The future is not something that all of our students have the luxury to think about. When students come to ALC Insight, some have dealt with life circumstances that have challenged them to their very core, while others have been yearning for something different. Either way, they are faced with the decision to leave their school, their teachers, their friends all behind. They have heard rumors about ALC Insight. They have heard that it is their last chance. They are worried about how they will be judged and the future is not looking very bright. Due to overwhelmingly negative core beliefs about alternative schools, our students walk in the door on their first day at White Bear Lake ALC scared, apprehensive, and with so many questions. What will my friends and family think of me now that I am here? How will I ever make them proud? Will I be able to go back to the main campus? Will they hire me if they know I've gone to ALC? Does being at ALC mean that I'll be getting a GED or a diploma? Will I graduate? Will I ever be able to go to college? These personal and academic uncertainties make it difficult to focus on the future. When I first began teaching at ALC, I did not know how to answer any of these questions. I student taught at a large high school in St. Paul in predominantly honors classes. I came into my classroom at ALC young, ambitious, and ready to teach. And then came the first blow. My mentor teacher said to me, oh, we go by first names here. Wait. What? At the time, I thought that I had worked so hard for this title of Mrs. Norcross. I didn't understand this, and it became the first thing about traditional education that I had to let go. Around the third or fourth week in my role as alternative educator, I said to my class, today, you're gonna get into groups of four, and you will create a skit about something or other, and you will perform this skit in front of the class. I wanted to teach these kids to be leaders and public speakers. This was a great plan. My honor students did it with such amazing results, so these, would, these students would do it too, right? Wrong. This was the second blow. Students looked up at me frozen in their seats, unwilling to get up and pair off into groups. And then I heard, you are crazy if you think I'm doing that. It was a total coup. The students had spoken and they collectively said to me, this is not the way we learn. Try again. My first year working at the ALC was filled with moments like this. It took many failures on my part before I realized that it wasn't about me or that great lesson that I wanted to, to teach. It wasn't about the future I thought these students should have. Fast forward to many years later, after years of rebuilding my arsenal of educational tools, I can finally answer these questions for our students who are walking into the doors of ALC for the first time. This is what I would say to ease their fears. There are so many misconceptions about alternative education what it is and what it isn't. White Bear Lake Area Learning Center Insight Program is not a place where students go to earn their GEDs. It is not a place where all the bad kids go. 
It is not an online program where students sit and work on a computer all day. It is not a place where parents should be anxious to send their children. It is not a punishment for academic struggles, and it is not a punishment for recurring negative behaviors. It is not your last chance. After the first few weeks of being with us, many of our students discover that this is a place where they feel at home. It is students feeling seen for the first time, and it is a door to education being reopened to students who thought this door was permanently closed. White Bear Lake ALC is an arsenal not only of content and curriculum, it is an arsenal of people, a family, working together to help students discover their own personal success. It is walking in the door and being greeted warmly each day. It is a math department of one who devotes her everything to teaching algebra and geometry to every single student in the building. <laughs> it is language arts teachers constantly searching for culturally responsive texts that will ignite a love for reading. It is students working to earn their CPR certification and health class. It is one teacher spending hours working on our monthly newsletter, recognizing students, some for the first time, for their achievements. It is students being inspired to open their very own Roth IRAs in economics. It is students attending overnight field trips to destinations as far as San Diego. It is our custodian who will never give up the fight to keep our building at a temperature comfortable for learning. <laughs> and it is our nutrition service specialist who knows and greets every student by name. It is students exploring careers in the trades. It is our counselors' constant effort to keep class sizes small so that the one-on-one -on -one needs of each student can be addressed. It is our school social worker who fiercely advocates for our most vulnerable students. It is our insight coordinator and our licensed drug and alcohol counselor who have helped so many students find and maintain their sobriety in our insight program. It is watching so many of our insight students, some who never thought they'd make it to 18, recovering, getting scholarships, going to college, and embracing futures they never thought possible. It is our independent study team helping adult learners earn their diplomas. It is all of the staff in our district who partner with ALC and continue relationship, like, relationships with students even after they've left the main campus. It is the ALC staff tirelessly working together to learn each student's individual story, following each student's lead, discovering how they learn best and how we can best serve them and make sure that every student earns a diploma that is so richly deserved. ALC is calling teachers by their first names, something that I have grown to love and profoundly understand. We do this to break down traditional barriers so students know that we are all in this learning journey together. Above all, ALC is a place where staff are literally blown away by the dedication and resilience of the students we serve. We have had the pleasure of watching students overcome obstacles, achieve what they deemed impossible, and leave us deeply and positively changed ready to embrace futures once again. With that in mind, I'd like to end with a few quotes from current and former ALC students. When I started school at ALC, I had no hope for my own educational success. I didn't care about school at all. Now, a year and a half later, thanks to the amazing staff at ALC, I will be transitioning back to the White Bear Lake high school for my senior year with determination and dedication to finish off strong. Senior, on her way back to White Bear Lake Area High School. 
ALC helped me to feel comfortable in my own skin. It challenged my friends and I to think in ways that we had never been asked to think before. ALC pushed me out of my comfort zone to strive for goals I never believed I could reach. Insight graduate and current student at Augsburg University. Before coming to ALC, I was in active addiction to drugs. I didn't see a future for myself at all. I wasn't passing any of my classes and I barely showed up from school. Transferring to the ALC quite literally saved my life. I got sober, started focusing on my education more, and where I once saw nothing, I began to envision an incredible future for myself. With the help of the staff at ALC, I have caught up on credits, I am ready to go to college to be a nurse, and I am ready to start the rest of my life. I am so grateful to my school and everyone who works there. Current ALC senior who will be taking classes at Century College this fall. <laughs> Thank you. ALC is students like these who empower us, show us what they need and teach us all to be better. Students who encourage us to throw away our entire arsenal of educational tools and start over again, ready to embrace the future. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for your years of serving White Bear Lake Area Schools and for your reminder of the importance of helping to create an amazing future for each and every one of our students. Next, we welcome to the podium our superintendent, Dr. Wayne Kazmichek. Good morning, Bears. I said good morning, Bears. All right. All right, uh, to start, I want to acknowledge our board members. So Jess, some of them are here I, that I've seen. Jessica Ellison, is, I, I've seen. Kathleen Danielson, Scott Arcan, Angela Thompson, Deb Beloyd, Chris Strife-Oji, and Marge Newmaster. So there, some of them are here. I want to, oh, there, yep. I want to make special mention of Dr. Newmaster, Marge is beginning her 54th year of service to White Bear Lake Area Schools. She has chosen not to run for uh, re-election, so uh, we might be able to keep you on in some other capacity, Marge, but uh, as far as teaching and being a school board member, this, this will be a wrap for your convocation. So she's out in front here. So. Thank you, Mark. So a couple other people I want to mention right now, and then we're going to, they're going to work into the, my comments here in a little bit. So we have the privilege of welcoming Minnesota Education Commissioner Willie Jett here today. Willie, would you mind just turning and waving? And then... Uh, Mr. Jim Galvin is also here as a guest of honor, and we'll talk about him in a little bit. All right, so where are our elementary school staff? Can you please applause and say welcome? How about early childhood and community ed? There we go. Middle school teams? How about all of our district-wide services, education center staff? Oh, there's a few here. Yeah. yeah. You don't usually get called out like that, right? And finally, let's hear a roar from our one White Bear Lake Area High School staff. So we are ready to kick off an amazing year. For those of you who haven't met me yet, I'm Superintendent Wayne Kazmercheck. And I'm very excited to be here in this stadium as we embrace our future together. 
Those of you who know me uh, may know that I'm not usually too animated. I have a reputation for being a quiet leader and supporter. But today I'm feeling just a little bit like Noah Lyles. Now, I've ha I had some good friends convince me not to wear track shorts today. So I didn't. Anyway, how many of you saw Noah Lyles win the gold medal in the men's 100? His childhood dream was to be the next Usain Bolt. He wanted to be the fastest man alive, and on that day he was. This year, watching the Olympics, I was struck by how many athletes overcame adversity. And whether you were cheering on Noah Lyles, who grew up with asthma, Simone Biles, who walked away from her sport to take care of her mental health, only to come back even stronger, or Minnesota's own Suni Lee, who won gold and two bronze medals despite Despite being sidelined with kidney disease last year, each of these champions talked about one thing, putting in the hard work to achieve their goals. And each spoke about the team and the community they had supporting them through their most challenging times. Today, I'm feeling a bit like these athletes, not just because I'm a runner and that I still like to think I'm an athlete, but because we have overcome a lot of challenges in the last five years a lot of change and disruption, and we've had an amazing team and a community of supporters behind us. Today we are on the cusp of a new era in White Bear Lake area schools. Look at this stadium, the finest in Minnesota and likely beyond the state of Minnesota. Today you will get to tour the new White Bear Lake area high school. And in the last five years, almost every classroom, office, and learning space throughout our district has been upgraded in some way. This work was done because of our community. Our community believed in our vision for transforming learning for students. Putting students at the center and inspiring ownership of their learning and their future. Our community believed in you, in your ability to connect with and inspire students. And our community has provided you with innovative, world-class spaces to learn and work. Indeed, it's an exciting and inspiring time to be a bear. Of course, to whom much is given, much is expected. Our community expects us to fill our promise to be at the forefront of educational excellence, to expand opportunities, to maintain high expectations, and to ensure each student realizes their unique talents and abilities. More than five years ago, we had a vision to design a system of education that we would be proud of, honoring our past and courageously building our future. We knew we needed to change, and we have embraced that change. We are on a transformational journey, and we truly are a different organization than what we were just a few short years ago. Our strategic planning process engaged hundreds of people and empowered us to redesign education for the modern age. It then laid the foundation for engaging our community in passing the most significant bond referendum in state history in 2019. Now, after five years of construction, we are over 90% complete, with only Sunrise and Central Middle School left. Last year, I spoke with you about embracing change. If you recall, I shared that collective change can only be achieved if every individual in the organization embraces personal and professional changes. We took a look at rapid changes in AI, changing expectations of students, families, and society, and changing workforce expectations. One day, history will mark this post-pandemic period as pivotal in education. School districts were going to emerge from that time period, from that crisis, either worse or better, or if strategic, something other. We seized upon the possibilities found only in crisis, and we coupled that with our strategic plan. When faced with the adversity of that time, we embraced it, and we embraced our vision. We changed, we got stronger, and we came better. There's an old adage, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Well, we are creating it. In recent years, we have made incredible progress on our strategic plan. Strategy one, creating and sustaining a safe, equitable, and nurturing environment. 
Safety starts with building relationships, seeing, hearing, and valuing each individual. And when we know our students and they feel safe and supported, we can create a culture of trust, collaboration, and academic excellence. This foundation allows us to ensure that every child has the opportunity to thrive both personally and academically. Strategy two, promoting and encouraging. I guess I'm supposed to wrap it up, huh? I thought that would get a standing ovation. I say that. Promoting and encouraging personal learning experiences and aspirations. We've been working to disrupt traditional forms of lecture and sit and get instruction to shift to more standards-based, inquiry-based learning. As we look forward, we will continue on student engagement, exceptional instructional practices, and strong relationships to connect with students and inspire them to exceed their own expectations, to genuinely design their futures. Strategy three is our commitment to transform to fulfill our mission continuously. We have made significant progress, and we are not yet satisfied with the impact on student achievement. This year, we are asking you to think critically about the goals we are trying to achieve. Student achievement must be our top priority for every student. 100% of students accomplish their personalized learning plan. 100% of students are prepared for their future. 100% of students graduate. All students must mean all not just those who are ready and eager to learn, not just those that we naturally connect with, not just those who are interested in what we are interested in. All must mean that every student has a trusted adult at school. All must mean that we believe in our ability to build relationships and inspire youth. All must mean that every student feels a sense of belonging in our community. Every member of our staff plays a vital role in supporting student achievement, whether you are feeding their bodies, supporting personalized learning, ensuring efficient operations so teachers can focus on teaching, or making sure our buildings are maintained for optimal learning. Each of us can inspire our students to greatness. Student achievement doesn't happen by accident. It happens in each classroom with support and collaboration, encouraging students to take ownership and responsibility for their learning. Finally, strategy four seeks to engage our entire community in supporting our students, staff, and schools. We know that when families are involved in their child's learning and work in partnership with our schools, students do better. We must continue to demonstrate to families that we care about their children and that we want families involved as partners. So our priorities for this year are to continue to build relationships and personalized learning. We have the honor and privilege of working with great families and educators in some of the most innovative, beautiful, and inspiring school buildings in the state. Now, I'd like to give a small piece of credit to an individual who inspired this work and exemplifies the commitment to relationships that we build in White Bear, Mr. Jim Galvin. So, Jim is a longtime coach, teacher, and community member who is being honored by our district for his decades of service to the school community. When he was not on the sidelines, Jim was a devoted and outstanding math teacher and eventually served five years as athletic director. Our school board voted last March to name the fully renovated, renovated White Bear Lake Area High School main gym, Galvin Court, You'll see that today on your tour. Galvin began his teaching and coaching career at White Bear in 1970. He served as head basketball coach from 1972 to 1998 with unparalleled success. His 1984 and 1985 teams won 52 consecutive games and earned back-to-back -back Class 2A state championships. He was named State Coach of the Year in 1985. Back then, Galvin's team served as a unifying force as White Bear Lake Area High School and Mariner High School came together as one high school split into North Campus and South Campus. Today, we honor Coach Galvin's legacy 40 years later as we unify the two campuses into one 
White Bear Lake Area High School building. When I first joined the White Bear leadership team coming up on 11 years ago, Mr. Galvin came to my office, introduced himself, and said our facilities need attention. And he was ready that day to begin door knocking to build support. He was involved throughout our visioning and facilities planning processes, serving as a trusted, intimate, influential voice in support of the school district. He's always focused on what was best for students. He has impacted thousands of lives, and one of those lives impacted is Minnesota Commissioner of Education, Willie Jett. So I'm honored to welcome Commissioner Jett up to, for a few comments. I heard somebody say, yeah, Park Center. Um, wrong place to be to say that. Anyways, good morning. And I love the fact that Superintendent used the term all. I just need to say that one more time. I love the fact that you used the term all. And so with that, I just want to thank you for inviting me to join you in this and celebrating this remarkable milestone. Today is a significant day for the White Bear Lake School District as you open the doors to your new high school, a testament to the vision and dedication that drives this community. Hopefully, this event is more than just a celebration. It is a powerful affirmation of your unwavering commitment to your students' futures. You're not merely unveiling a new building, but ushering in a new chapter in your educational journey. This facility embodies your district's dedication to providing an exceptional learning environment, standing as a beacon of unity, innovation, and limitless possibilities that await both current and future students. I also want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to everyone who contributed to this achievement, leaders, educators, supportive families, and the community members whose dedication and generosity made this possible. I would also like to recognize Coach Jim Galvin, after whom the gymnasium will be named. This is a wonderful way to honor and thank a coach and educator whose legacy will endure for generations. People might not know this, but I vividly remember coaching against him in the section tournament for probably three consecutive years. And in the middle of a game, he looked over at me and said, isn't this fun? <laughs> Coach Galvin, I need you to know, no, it was not fun. We lost, okay? As we look to the future, let us remember that this new high school is a symbol of hope and possibility for all students. It's a place where educators can continue to fostering an environment where every student is encouraged to succeed, regardless of their background or circumstances. So let us embrace this new building, both of a new building and a new school year, with enthusiasm and optimism. And so here's to the countless successes and bright futures that will be shaped within these walls. Congratulations to the White Bear Lake School District and to all who made this extraordinary achievement possible. And in the words of Coach Galvin, isn't this fun? Good luck. All right, thank you, Commissioner Jett. It's perfect. I offered Jim an opportunity to address the group. I don't know if he's taking us. I think he might be taking us up on it. He's making his way up here. Would you like to? All right. Uh, thank you, Wayne, and thank you for the kind words, Wayne and Willie. Um, welcome, people. I came to White Bear Lake in 1970 after spending five years in a little town of uh, Millard, Minnesota from 1965 until 70 where I taught math, grade 7 through 12, coached football, basketball, baseball. I taught driver education. I somehow taught a couple of elementary physical education classes too. And I got paid uh, $4,800 for doing that. And I tell you, I loved it. And I, then I came to White Bear in 70, and I, 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 love, I love White Bear Lake. 
and uh, we have the last. Now we have two granddaughters, one who will be in the 11th grade, one will be in the 12th grade. The, the other kids have all gone through White Bear schools, but we have two granddaughters left. And I'm uh, so happy uh, that Wayne and Tim, the school board, and our past leaders have uh, kept things classy in White Bear. We, we've always had good uh, staff members. Our facilities have not always been the best, but I thought our strength in White Bear Lake had been uh, the quality of our staff members, everybody um, in the, on the staff, not just the teachers, but all of our staff, staff members, and, and we still do have that. Um, you know, I retired in 99. I substitute taught until COVID. I missed the, I missed the classroom. I, I missed coaching. Uh, I just have a couple of words. I don't have too much here, but uh, a couple of words of advice. Um, number, number one, you know, I, I used to get upset with all the interruptions that occurred during the day. I'd be sitting at my desk uh, during prep time or something, a student comes in and wants help or something, <laughs> you know, or uh, another teacher wants to talk about something in the classroom. Most of the day, Most of the day, like you people like probably, you do, people too, probably do, too, until I realized, until I realized uh, those interruptions, those interruptions are, were, were my job. Were my job. And so welcome, and the welcome the interruption. interruption. Uh, number two, uh, number two uh, thing, is thing is vote. vote. Okay. You know, I encourage your students to vote uh, for student council members, uh, whatever else they can vote for. You people have to be good citizens and vote for our school board members, politicians. Uh, whenever you get a chance to vote, you know, we're pretty lucky, I think, living here in America. So whenever you get a chance to vote, vote. And then the third thing is uh, uh, buy lemonade. So we get we were trying to get them to buy our lemonade. And how how can we expect uh, them to buy our lemonade unless we buy theirs? You know you know you got to go watch. A play, a play. Go watch a band go watch concert. A band go watch a game. Go watch, a game. Uh, go watch them uh, ride their bike. I mean, whatever. I mean, whatever. But uh, you got to show the kids you care about them. Uh, in order to, uh, to be an effective uh, teacher, I think. Uh, so, if you're driving down the street, you happen to be going maybe faster than you should, but you drive by a lemonade stand, you know, swing around the block. Come back and buy some lemonade. Uh, you'll make those kids feel good. And in your classroom, uh, buy your kids lemonade. And I hope this year for you people, everybody here, I hope it's your best year so far. Thank you. And thank you, Jim. Appreciate the words of wisdom. Commissioner Chad, thank you for your leadership, uh, your commitment to public education in the great state of Minnesota. Another round of applause for our special guest. All right, just a few more comments and then we are set to begin our tour. So in White Bear, we have been architects of change, building a foundation to support our students and community for generations to come. From the early elementary years, students learn their unique strengths and then dream about and design their future. Our journey is marked by innovation, collaboration, and unwavering belief in the power of education to transform lives. When we set our plan five years ago, it was not just a roadmap, but a promise we promise to create an environment where learning thrives and where every child feels valued. Our classrooms are vibrant hubs of creativity and innovation. Our students will be active participants in their learning rather than passive recipients of knowledge. They are critical thinkers, problem solvers, and compassionate individuals ready to make an impact locally and globally. 
This year, all eyes will be on White Bear Lake area schools. For example, we recently were invited to be part of a national cohort of future-focused schools and learning with students at the center. We are a great school system, honoring our legacy and focused on the future. And we can become even better because we are committed, like our Olympic champions, to doing the hard work of getting better every day. We are embracing our future. And before we conclude, I'm going to share an example of that commitment with one more Olympic-style shout-out. Could all of our high school staff please stand? I'm asking you to stand for a couple of reasons. Last year, our high school substantially closed the opportunity and graduation gap between our white students and students of color. We are living our equity promise and giving students what they need to succeed. Please give yourselves a round of applause. High school staff. Please turn to your colleagues in early childhood, elementary, and their middle schools and say thank you. The incredible levels of achievement among our graduates and the confidence our students have to achieve, lead, and serve starts with our youngest learners and builds over time. Every employee in our district at every level can inspire our students to believe in themselves and challenge themselves with rigorous coursework. When we believe in our students, they learn to believe in themselves. When they believe, they have the confidence to design their own futures and create their own success. Let's build in our students the confidence and excitement of a champion, willing to put the work in and achieve greatness. Now, go believe in our kids, go build relationships, go inspire greatness, and go Bears. Thank you, Dr. Kazbacek, Commissioner Jett, and Jim Galvin for your tag team remarks this morning and for helping us start the year out with energy and enthusiasm around embracing our future. Now that we've got that order of the evening out, we'll turn it over to the cheerleaders for a performance of our White Bear Lake Area High School School Summit.